Welcome to Potential Props, Inc. Here you will find props made from redesigned and modified found objects, which may have unique shapes and characteristics. Many times, the found item can be used as the catalyst to create one-of-a-kind devices using inventive ideas, novel approaches, and creative thinking. This website will cover most of my builds using my ink technique. Okay, before I actually take this apart to show you what I've done with the the internal components of the shaver, I wanted to show how this particular mechanism is going to function and how adding the drive mechanism and the worm gear and the motors is going to make this portion uh, move back and forth. On the shaver, it only had to move a small amount, uh, you know, maybe not even a quarter inch uh, to turn the shaver on and off. But in this particular case, it moves a little bit more. It gives it a little more functionality. So I'm going to go ahead and apply power to the motor here. And again, on this motor here, if I put plus and minus in a specific way, it's going to be opposite on the motor on the other side so that they're both driving the, the shaft in the same direction. So if I take my little 9 volt here and I'm going to hook it up and see what happens and watch the little area right here. This is going to move in and out. There's out and in. Okay. So that, that little function is going to happen when I press the button and of course LEDs are going to shine and flash and flicker on the front to give the impression that it's actually scanning or doing some function. So that's the that's the mechanism, that's the drive, and I'll go ahead and remove that and show you exactly what it was that uh, that I did to make it do that. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out as well is that this particular piece that moves in and out was physically attached. It had little uh, arms that actually clamped itself to the body so that it would only move only so far. So in order to get to that on the original one, right here you can see this is the one, this is the original. It only moves like maybe a quarter of an inch, but it's physically attached. It actually has little arms that actually grab onto it to keep it from pulling off. So what I ended up doing, it was popping the face. This uh, particular face is actually pressed on there so you take the face off and it allows you to get to the arm so that you could actually remove that uh, from the body. So once I did that I had to make the uh, the mechanism here, I had to make this free and clear so that it would move you know like I showed you uh, earlier with the battery and the motor and how it would move. So in order to do that I had to extend it off the top here. So basically this particular piece is now floating slightly off the body so that it doesn't rub, so it doesn't drag. So when the motor allows that to come out, it's not rubbing or it's not binding. So I'm going to go ahead and I, I remove the screws, the, the single screw that was here. Okay, it held on the plate which has of course been modified. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these two Allen head screws and to show you what it was I did here take this out here and this one and it's an extension these uh, screws are extending this okay so let me go ahead and take it off here I'm not exactly sure what's going to fall out of there okay so once I remove that set that down there we have a piece of brass there's actually two pieces of brass okay so these are two screws that are standing upright okay and then the other brass piece let me go ahead and knock that out of here is here so these are spacers and when the screw tightens down it actually holds this piece away from the body to allow it to uh, to move up and down okay so on here this this whole piece has been cut away this is an opening that's uh, been cut and also I put a groove in here this little slot is a clearance slot so that those brass pieces can move freely up and down okay so I'm going to go ahead and slide this out of here so we can see what it looks like. 
Okay, so I maintain the same uh, kind of in, you know, where the inside actually fits in there a specific way. So I'll go ahead and take that out. And as you can see here, there's the, uh, the two motors, one on either end, reverse polarity. So they both operate to allow this shaft to move, uh, to spin uh, inward or outward, okay, and allowing this to move up or down. And by doing that, this mechanism here uh, has been modified now in such a way that I put the two metal shafts, I re-drilled the back hole there. I kept the, uh, the original hole for the, the shaft right there, that's the original hole for the shaft, and I drilled into the body here to maintain an equal or an even plane across there, okay? And then the other shaft to keep it from rocking, you know, because otherwise it would bind, I had to add the other shaft, okay? So that was all of this. So what I ended up doing, the way it appears, is I only kept from the original piece, I kept the drive worm gear, the uh, Teflon piece here, this is the, the, the little piece that actually, uh, their little teeth that actually hold on to the, the drive here. And then, so I guess what I ended up doing is cutting all of that away. So none of the black from here up I kept. I only kept this back portion. And again, to keep it from flopping around, I had to re-drill a hole and put the, uh, the other shaft right there. So there you go. So now, if we kind of look at this to see how it uh, compares, um, I ended up putting the motors on this side where the battery goes. Uh, the middle part where the motor was is now the drive, and of course the two motors on this side. And the remaining hole, the remaining opening here, I'm going to probably end up using uh, two 3-volt uh, lithium batteries, you know, to equal 6 volts, so there will be a 6-volt drive. Possibly. I may end up going 12 volts. I, I'm still working on the drive mechanism or the drive power uh, to see whether or not I need to use 12 volts or, or, or 6 will be good enough. So there we go. So that's uh, sort of how the modification has taken place. It's probably hard to tell from the video. But um, what I'm going to end up doing now, what I still have to add, are these little micro switches. Now these little switches the intent of these, there's going to be two of these on either end of the drive. So when the drive is fully all the way up, we don't want the motor to continue to run. So it has to hit a micro switch to turn the motor off. And then when I reverse the polarity, the shaft has got to go, or the centerpiece has to go back down, and there's got to be a, a switch on this end as well. So I'm going to end up putting two of these little micro switches, which I got from other components. These are switches that I removed from other CD players some time ago. So they're now going to come in handy in, in this particular case. So I got two of those, and again, it'll stop the motor up at the top or the bottom like it's supposed to. So there we go. So uh, And also the inside of this has been modified. And the reason I cut this away is because I had to get two the front half here. I had to get my Dremel in there and remove uh, a fair amount of plastic on the inside so that it would have clearance for the motor when it slid up in there. So that way uh, w when this slid in it didn't actually bind up against some other piece of plastic that was already in there. So there we go. So that's uh, how it's come along so far. So I'll put that in there like that. I'll uh, put the metal plate back where it belongs here. This only goes in one direction here like that and I'll put the screw back in there to hold it uh, and then I'll go ahead and put this front face back on and then of course this will snap back into place it'll be repainted probably be an LED there in that hole when it uh, when it kicks out and obviously there's going to be some sort of LED scanning effect on the front maybe some kind of like say rod with maybe lines in it or something like that so there you go I think uh, that pretty well covers it to this point and I'll get back to you when it's actually uh, repainted. I'm going to repaint it. And um, like I say, the switch that releases the front face here will be probably most likely the power switch to turn it, to turn it on and off. <laughs> so there we go. All right, so stay tuned. We'll see how this actually turns out. Before I move on with further modifications, I wanted to show one more thing. As I showed before, there is the uh, the worm gear here, and it's quite a bit longer than what I actually needed. So 
what I did was I cut down the shaft to actually fit more into the area that I was actually needing and since I did that of course that you know cut the ends of the shaft off and they were basically flat so what I did was I drilled into the ends of the shaft so that I could actually put this brass tubing. This is a small brass tubing and I drilled to the exact dimensions, the exact size, drill bit size of the, the brass tubing here and shoved it in there Okay, so that it's actually press fit and then I had a small amount of it sticking out so that the shaft of this, this is the, the shaft of the motor, is so small that I could actually press it in to the, the, uh, the tubing, which uh, I had to drill that out just, uh, just a little so that this would actually fit in there. And then I crimped it because this particular shaft has a flat spot on it. There's a, there is a flat spot so that when I push the brass tubing over it, I crimped it just slightly so that it would actually lock the shaft in place so when it spins it actually has something to hold on to. And being that this was actually press fit in this piece, uh, it worked out great. So I did the same on both sides. Put the brass tubing, um, drilled out just the exact same size as the shaft on the motors and, and shoved them in there. And in order to hold the motor in place, I used the existing plastic area here with the two screws that actually came out of the motor in the first place and the motor on this side since there was no motor there I had to just adhere it to the body right here and cut away a portion of it so that I could actually do that so basically it's all attached it's not going anywhere it's perfectly level and uh, of course when the, the motors turn it moves this portion up and down and uh, it works uh, just as I planned it so I just wanted to show you that a little bit, what, uh, what had to go into putting the, the two motors and the shaft and all that in place on there. Okay, so there you go. So it gets right back in there. And again, what I'll do is I'm going to put micro switches on there. I'll show you that when it's done. Um, and then um, also maybe since this portion does move up and down, I might actually have maybe something come out the center here. I, I don't really know. Maybe some sort of thing that actually protrudes a little bit. So when this piece is actually sticking out, when this is actually uh, moved forward a little bit, when this actually sticks up, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do maybe right there in that particular part. Maybe I'll have some scanning LEDs. I really don't know. I just have to kind of keep the uh, current draw to a minimum, of course, because I'm only going to be using uh, the two small batteries to actually uh, power this. And the batteries I'm thinking of using, let me just grab those here. These are 3 volt. They are slightly bigger than the hole where it's actually planning where I'm actually planning for them to go. So when this is sitting here, um, the idea is I'm going to remove some plastic of course in there so these would actually slide in there. The body is perfectly wide enough, but the piece I'm actually trying to put it into may not be quite what I'm looking for. So when this is pressed in there and this one drops in there like that the the two batteries will be about like that I'm hoping that will work the only problem again is I'm looking at this is it might protrude slightly beyond this point here which when the lid goes on there it, it might be in the way so we'll see I'm still working the details on that I haven't quite uh, decided um, I can remove the metal contact from this end and it will slide in just a smidgen further that'll give me some some room so you know it might still work I'm still in the planning stages on that yeah and these are uh, 3 volt uh, uh, CR2's so they're, they're pretty good little batteries uh, pretty r r you know you can find them uh, in any camera supply or something like that so anyway that's what I'm working to do on this